offering you've given. And I know God sees every widow's mite and every gift given him that is his work. And uh, I want to make Sister Ginger welcome. Ginger, it's great to see you in the Denver Hodges. We're so glad to see her from Oregon. And I know she looks so good there with her dear, precious mother. And we're glad to see you back home again, Ginger, with us. We missed you out there on the coast. You and Steve. I've been watching. And, but she's been watching. Thank God for this camera right here. It takes us right into her home. And she watches us. It. This ministry God has given. Right. And then if I left any other visitor now, where's Roy Sutton? Is that hey, over Roy. here? Uh, this uh, We said Woods. Where did we get Woods from? Uh, but uh, I thought you brethren said Woods. It's not Woods Sutton. Let's get the name right. Brother Royce Sutton, we're so glad to have you with us, and I made you welcome. I see our brother back here. God bless you, my brother. Back of um, Brother Joe over there, and uh, Brother Michael, that is, over there. We're glad to see you. And then uh, the rest of God's family that has come here. I'm missing somebody that should be welcoming right now. Sister Roxanne over here, she's one of us. My goodness, Roxanne, you've been away too long now. Away, 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 way too long now. All right, now, I got you, didn't I? Praise our God. We, we love you, Sister Roxanne. You're part of us, and we're so glad to see you. And not only glad to see you, but we need you. Then back of me is Brother Edgar Nenya. Praise the name of the Lord. back from Costa Rica. Guatemala, El Salvador, and Central America. So we're glad. But he has a testimony. He'll be giving it. He gave it this morning in the service. Brother Edgar has been calling me from Costa Rica saying, Brother Marlow, please pray for me. I have been declared a victim of prostate cancer. And it is severe. It's in a bad state of being in my body. We prayed. We sought God. He called me several times. Each time I would say, Brother Edgar, we're praying for you. God is able. Each time I would say that. Um, he told us in the morning service that the doctors have declared they can find no cancer. Okay. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, I don't think that's sufficient. Praise the Lord. shouting back there and they said, wipe them down, wipe them down. He said, let me remind you, if these hold up pizza, the rocks and the stones are fire. God's going to surprise some of the church someday and let that wall cry out, praise the Lord. Amen. Because let me tell you something. It's no effort for me. Oxygen fills my lungs rapidly. Hallelujah. Have good lungs. Praise God. God. Praise God for it. Yeah. I use them to glorify God. Yeah. I use them to praise His name. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever I am, yeah. wherever I am, I'll praise His name. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise now we're having revival this week. I was out this morning meeting with pastors. Thursday night, Brother Dexter McDonald is bringing his church uh, community Fellowship on 27th Avenue, and he's going to bring his praise team, his church, uh, down here, and he's going to be with us. I, without seeing across the river, pastors, letting them know, I want you to get excited about it. Yeah, nice. There's some flyers back here. We did have 500. There are less now. We'll print more. Um, we'll be distributing those flyers across the city. Uh, you can get them as you leave. They'll give you as many as you want. I don't want any waste cans. I don't want any out there in the street. I don't want any back in the back of these chairs or these pews. If you take them, pass them out. Be like Brother Marlow was this morning. I was putting them on windshields all over the city. And I was in church here besides that. Uh, and I was at the hospital after that, seeing Sister May Ramsey uh, that is sick and ill. Uh, but let me tell you something. God 
will promote you, uh, he'll, he'll impel you, compel you, and empower you. Yes. All you need to do is say, here I am, Lord. Yes, amen. That's all. Amen. Praise the yes. name of the Lord. Yes. Lord Benny, Georgia, that sergeant said, uh, all that are going to take the oath of the United States Army step forward. And I knew if I stepped backward, I would be in a problem area. So I just stepped forward and said my vows to this country, and I was a soldier <laughs> after they made me such. God wants soldiers in his army Amen. right now. Amen. Amen. None of us are too tired. None of us are too weary. None of us are too sad. None of us are too lonely. We all have a right and a reason yes. to give ourselves to God. Amen. You know that right and reason? It's called Calvary. Yes. It's called a cross. Yes. It's called a man on the cross. Yes. His name is Jesus. Yes. I'm going to say his name right now. Yes. I'm going to say the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. I'm going to tell you his name delivers you from trouble. His name delivers you from evil. His name delivers you from sickness. His name delivers you from loneliness. His name delivers you from fear. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Have the word you held up? Go with me to the 15th chapter of Luke. We're going to deal with a man named Prodigal Son. And we're going to deal with another man called Son. And they were both in the same house, had the same father, but reacted differently to that father. They both were not the same character. One was uh, rather low and one was rather high. And God had to deal with a high one and bring him down and bring the low one up. Because, you know, God works on us that he might work in us that he might work through us. I'm going to label this, I suppose, the man that had Teflon on him and could not get past because there's a different thing about being in the world. You know, Teflon's in the, my wife has got a pan, frying pan in there, and uh, you can just put eggs and they'll just slide across. You've got a cast iron skillet that I can never fry bacon in. I've tried it. I've tried lowering the blade. I've tried putting the skillet halfway on. But my bacon gets stuck every time in that cast iron skillet. So I like the Teflon better. And then there's another stuff you can spray it. It makes it even slicker. There are people that are in the world, but they've got enough of God's mercy called Teflon that they'll be back. They're only gone for a little while. There's some people that go into the world, sad to say, and never find their way back. They just never find their way back. But there's some that go... And there's enough of God's mercy coating them in their heart, in their spirit, till they'll hear him if they're in the bar room, if they went that low. They'll hear him past the blues in a dive or a humpy dump. They'll hear him in their grip of sin, and sin is absolutely impelling them to go to the lowest level. Anybody could ever do it. Uh-huh. And there's some that they're the iron skillet. Whatever they pick up when they leave God and go away from God, it sticks to them. It burns them. But there's some that find their way back. Thank God. That's the greatness of God. That's the greatness of mercy. Yes. And I just feel God's going to give us a miracle here today. And Brother Roy, Royce is it? Uh, Royce is it? I said Roy, but we'll say Roy for short. I believe that you told me, a man of God, that you wanted the Holy Spirit. I don't know wherever you've been. I don't know all you've done. I don't know your levels. But I do know this. God had some Teflon on you. And there's mercy coating you. Hallelujah. And you're here today to get Amen. back to where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's read Luke 15. Uh, I mean, uh, just just uh, Luke, Luke uh, um, I want, I want the, the, the parable. I want the parable. I'm, I'm not picking it up here. Uh, it's verse 11, isn't it? Yeah. Right. A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to the father, his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. When we are in the love of God, God has equal shares of love for every son he has in the house. But we don't all have the same reaction to his love. Or we don't have the same judgment with his love. But he divides to us equally and says, this is my goods. This is for you. You're the son in my house. You can be a daughter and be a son. You're sons of God. But we don't all have the same reaction. We don't all have the same judgment. And these two men did not have the same judgment or the same reaction. And friend, it does matter what choice you make Amen. with Amen. what God gives you. Amen. It matters how you spend it. Yes. Yes. It matters how you exhaust it. Yes. It matters how quickly you go through it. Oh, yes. It matters if suddenly it doesn't matter anymore or there's not any value to it. It matters if you just feel like you've got to live for today and uh, what is that country western song? Help me through the night or something like that. Uh, you know, um, uh, that uh, anyway, there's a, there's a line in it that doesn't matter what the devil says or something about that. I don't listen to it that much, but uh, in other words, just let me get through the night. Just let me get through the night. You should know that is really... That's a good portion of uh, mentality that's with people right now. And it doesn't leave us all together when we come to God. Because there's still some of me and some of God in my father's inheritance that he gives me. And uh, I have a decision that I'm going to make and God makes his decision and here we go, down the road of life. And uh, in the scriptures, these two boys, they, they had their father's inheritance. I know I'm using this totally different than traditionally we use it in the understanding we have of it. And he divided unto them his living. You know, it's a wonderful thing to know that I don't have somebody else's living today. I have God's living. And you have God's living. Yes, That's why you ought to just feel real good about yourself. And about just sitting in that chair right now. And being right here in worship to exalt him and lift him up on high. Praise the name of the Lord because God thought enough of you Yes. That he gave his only son yes. that you could have your, the living divided to you. Oh, yes. The father divided his inheritance to us, his children. Yes. See, I'm not a fool by any, by any means. No, I'm not. Uh, I can tell you now, I appreciate a gift when it's given me. God. Hallelujah. I appreciate anything that's valuable. Oh, yes. I appreciate anything that gives me life. Oh, yes. God. That's why I'm so glad I can walk here like this at my time in life and sit in that chair like that. I'm glad I can be here today because I value living. Yeah, God. And I'm going to say my living God. doesn't come from the world. All right. My living comes from God. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to praise anybody 
right. but my heavenly Father. Yeah. Right. For everything I have, yeah. my yeah. daughter, my granddaughter, my grandson, the house I live in, the two dogs I wear on my tie, uh, everything, my wife, uh, you know, everything there is about life, yes. breath, health, and strength, Amen. the church, that God has let me stay here 50 years, and you folks have put up with me and endured me and, and tolerated me, um, you know, if you have. But really, I don't, uh, if, you're, if you're tolerating anything, don't, don't tolerate that. Uh, celebrate something. Uh, celebration is much better than tolerance. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. If, if you tolerate your salvation, you've got a problem. If you tolerate the word of God, you've got a problem. If you tolerate worship, you've got a problem. Don't you have a celebration. Praise the name of the Lord. Celebrate being free. Celebrate being born again. Celebrate that God loves you enough to give you breath and life and strength. Somebody praise him. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Have a celebration. Don't tolerate. Tolerance runs out. Celebration never does. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. They took the goods. The question is, I got my goods. I got the loot. Praise God. He gave me the portion that belongs to me. What am I going to do with it? What did this one son do? What did he do? Let's read a moment and see what he did. And not many days, it didn't take long, after the younger son gathered all together Mine. Mine. It's mine. I'm going to share it with you, elder brother. I'm going to stay in my father's house. I'm going to grab what's mine and go. <coughs> Have you ever seen that attitude? Oh, yes, sir. Amen. Have you ever seen that? Yes. Amen. Hey, it's mine, and what's mine is mine, what's yours is mine, and it's all mine, and I'm getting out of here. Yes. And this younger son. So I'm all that the Father has given me. But he did something very, very foolish with it. And I'm illustrating this because I want you to know, that every one of you, and I'm not preaching to the First Baptist downtown, I'm preaching to Gospel Tabernacle. Somebody said he was preaching to me. Well, I, I'm preaching to me also. I want us to realize that we have something precious called the father's goods the father's inheritance you didn't earn it because by grace are you saved through faith and that a gift of God not a works lest any man should boast. you and I were not smart enough pretty enough handsome enough but to earn what I have and what you have you say, Brother Marlowe, I remember when God led me. Well, it's just like Brother Royce here today. He's been witness to. He's been sitting here. And he said to me a few minutes ago, and Brother Royce, I'm taking you. You know, I, I remember everything a person says to me. And you said to me, bring on the word. Well, here I come. Praise God. Amen. 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 I promise you, you won't go to sleep sitting down there. Because God has something for this man today. And I believe the presence of the Lord is here right now. And I believe this man is hungry. I believe God has led him here. And I believe God wants to give him the Father's good. Praise the name of the Lord. Just like he gave it to you and to me and to you. Take your finger, put it right in your chest and say, my father gave me his good. My father gave me his good. Praise the name of the Lord. And I am rich because my father is rich. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up here, man. Praise the name of the Lord. If I feel the Holy Ghost and you get the feeling of the Holy Ghost, you know what we're going to have? We're going to have a revival. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. It 
matters what you do with what God has given you. Oh, yes. It matters what I do with it. So quickly, and not too quickly, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he was impatient, wasn't he? Yes. And took his journey into a far country. Read a lot about his character. His profile stands out. And there wasted, and this is, this is a terrible moment, and there wasted, and there wasted the substance that his father gave him. What is that saying that they have on television? A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah. Every time they say that, I sit there and shiver and think of my mind, am I wasting it? That, that guy seems so, he's fitted for the part. A mind is a terrible thing yeah. to waste. Yes, yes, and I sit there thinking, have I wasted my life? Because your life is like the mileage on, a, on the highway. It runs out. It runs to an end. And if you waste it, and if you waste this, and the same way with a church. A church can be a great church, yes. Oh, yes. but it can start wasting its living yes. and wasting its substance uh -huh. and wasting all that we have. Yep. And suddenly that church that could be a lion roaring uh -huh. and could be a powerful threshing instrument, oh, yes. a harvester in the field yes. to reach the lost in the time. Uh -huh. I think of how many drug people there are some of them right over in this corner while I'm speaking. There'll be a drug transaction or more than one right over on this corner of 8th Avenue. Right around us here. How many homicides has Brandon had this year and Palmetto? A record number and some of them unsolved and will be. We live in a world where people are, they even use that term, he was wasted. I wasted him. Criminals say that. I wasted him. A man that killed a man, so I wasted him. Well, did you know that's what people do? They waste. How big is the garbage heap on Lena Road out there? How long will Brandon be able to keep up in garbage? There are some cities in America right now that have no place to put their garbage. Because America is a waste nation. Yes. America's known all over the world as fold it up, tear it up, throw it out get something new, yes. waste it. Yes. And America also is wasting lives. Yes. Did you know the church can be wasting lives? Yes. Did you know we can be an institution where waste is yes. rather yes. than living is? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I'm going to get down here and say uh, what I really feel because I believe God is getting ready to do something he's never done. I believe the church is taking a step from yesterday to today. Yes. And all, and, and you know it isn't easy? It's like pulling teeth. Did you know the church reminds me of somebody in a dentist chair right now? And the dentist, my God, I know how I am. I have almost have heart attacks when I sit in the dentist chair. I, I really do. That, that, that guy comes to me and he can smile at me and say, it's not gonna hurt too bad. It's not gonna tell me all that. And I, I look up at him and say, Dr. King, you're going to hurt me. I know you're going to hurt me. Uh, no, 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 Pastor Marlowe. I, I'm not. It won't be that bad. I've never been there when it wasn't bad. <laughs> I've never taken a shot when it wasn't bad. Oh. Don't tell me it's not going to be bad when, ouch! It hurts. <laughs> and I felt it pulled. Don't tell me that. Let me tell you something right now. It, the church reminds me of a group of people sitting in a dental chair. And it has to be done. The rotten teeth have to be pulled. Yes. Amen. Yes. I said the rotten teeth have to be pulled. Yes. The, the rubbish that's been put around us uh, the last 50 years uh, has to be cleaned out. Yes. Praise the name yes. of the Lord. must get a breath of fresh air and a revival and a change and a direction.
resurrection and the Holy Spirit come and help us. I didn't hear every amen, but bless God. I'm going to preach it for the right here. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It's a painful thing right now, the transition of the church to the kingdom, but it must happen. It must come to pass. No going back. The cross before me and the world behind me. And I'm going to go there. Praise the name of the Lord. painful to change. I got up this morning early. I thought how painful I'd forgotten the time it changed. And my dogs don't even know the time has changed. So they just do their usual thing. Nobody reminded them that the clock went back and out. So they just did their thing. And I got up and I thought, oh Lord, the weight of the church. I feel it. I feel it. Because the church, and that's me and you, and we're part of the other. Yeah. We're part of the greater. Yeah. We're part. We're in transition right now. Come on. And the Lord wants us to not waste our substance nope. in riotous living. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The young son did. Yes. God gave him something. Yes. His father gave him something. Uh -huh. Remember. He gave the Gentile just as much as he gave the Jew. Yes, right. And he gave the Jew just as much as he gave the Gentile. Yes, and that's why the middle wall of perdition is broken down. All right. And the veil is torn in place. Praise the name of the Lord. Because Jesus is Jesus up to the Jew first and to the Greek. But thank God, he's still Jesus. Yeah, and there's no veil between any man. All right. Your color doesn't give a veil. Yeah. Your skin doesn't give a veil. Yeah. Your education doesn't give a veil. All right. Your yesterday doesn't give a veil. Your sins doesn't give a veil. Whether you're a Sunday school prissy or you're a, a, you, you are a, a, a rough fella out of the world. However you are. Whether you're just one of these moralists that feel like I have never been bad in my life. Uh, I, uh, my little pinky may have been, but not me. Or whether you're somebody that knows uh, you're a low-down rascal yeah. from the other side of the uh, tracks. It doesn't matter. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. The same salvation that lifts one lifts the other. Yeah. The same salvation that heals the one heals the other. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The same cross All right. for the same rascal All right. Come on. for the same good person. All right. It doesn't matter. Amen. The Father gave them both his living. Amen. He didn't respect Brother Marlowe above Brother Joe. He didn't respect me above Glenn. He gave you his living. What have you done with it? What are you doing with it? Come on, brother. The young son couldn't wait to go and spend it all in riotous living. Riotous living means uncontrolled, undisciplined, without any direction or purpose. Is the next? Is the next? Is the next? Look in there, let's try the next. Look in there, let's try the next. That's riotous living. But you know, here's where God stands out quickly and not too quickly. And when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And let me say this and say it just as good as I can, and I won't say it as good as the next one could or would, but you're going to spend out after a while. And I'm going to spend out after a while. Because it doesn't matter my substance given me by God is unlimited as long as I stay within the limits. Oh, yes. Amen. Let me say that again. Yes, amen. I don't know if you got that or not. Yes. Amen. But my substance that God gave me is without limit. No, no limit on it until I go past the limit. All right. And this younger son 
went past the limit and he spent on. And he wrote the check and it bounced. He reached to the bank account and it was not there. It was empty. Worst feeling I've ever had in my life is when I one day went to get gas. I had nothing to get gas with. It's a sad feeling. The other day at, uh, when I caught um, Air Tran, I was in such a hurry going up to Terre Haute, Indiana Friday. I was going up there Friday, coming back Saturday. And here's what I did. I rushed to the Tampa airport, drove my own car, got in there, parked it, got in that little thing, and uh, shook to pieces. And I got up and rushed across to uh, uh, Delta Airlines because I thought my ticket was on Delta. Yeah, I got a mind fix, and it's on Delta. Isn't it something how your mind gets fixed? You can't see, hear, or think thunder, and your mind is fixed. And I rushed over there, kept sliding my credit card in the swiper uh, to, to get my itinerary. Kept coming out, no information on Bob. Uh, my spirit began to get rattled. I got impatient, you know, and, and I thought, they know I'm flying this airplane. But the truth was, I wasn't flying Delta Airlines, and they were not about to put me on Delta because I wasn't anywhere in their system. It was Air Tran. And Air Tran knows better, and Delta knows better. So I hear I hurry across the, but in the meantime, I reached up and put my billfold up on the counter. And I grabbed my card and hurried over to Delta. And I got over to Delta, and I swiped the card, and I reached back to put the card back in the billfold. And guess what? There was no billfold. And the plane was getting ready to go. And there were some other incidents too, but I won't go into those. <laughs> but 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 here I was, and and I said, Oh my God, oh Lord, have mercy on me, isn't it, Sonny? When we waste everything we've got, when we spend all we have, then we want God to have mercy on us. Hey. <laughs> when we suddenly can't find the billfold, we want God to come. Hurry, God! You're the fireman. You're the plumber. You're the janitor. You're the electrician. Fix it all for me. Fix it. Fix it. It's funny how that thing that gives you back problems gives you such confidence. Sometimes you feel more confidence in that than you might in God. It might be good for God to get it away from you and remind you that he's greater than that is. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know if you got that. Let me slide that past you again. I swapped my credit card in and didn't get the, all the information back. I said, sometimes uh, we don't know we are, but we're depending on the natural more than we are God's grace uh, right. and the spiritual. All right. Amen. Amen. Am I getting a... I've got to get there. I said, sometimes we don't realize we are, but we just count our valuables in this world more than we count our valuables with God. Am I right? Is it right, Nani? Praise the name of the Lord. I'm trying to get to the place where if this thing would go, and I hope, oh God, you keep it a while longer. But, but if it does, I can trust in my God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I hurried back. I was praying all the way across the, across the terminal. Oh, God. By this time, I was dragging that thing and running a little bit. And I said, oh, God. Oh, God, let that billfold be there. Lord, I know you parted the Red Sea. I know you called the dead to walk. I know that you could raise the uh, lame up. Lord, let that billfold on that counter be there. Did you know my God was so good to this fella that's so forgetful and so I needed my wife around, I needed uh, everybody else around, and I couldn't, uh, uh, you know, or some of you brethren with me or something, but God was good to me. I went back there, I looked at it, and I saw it. Uh, from here, to, uh, my eyesight got better. But the quicker I got to that counter, the farther away from that counter I was, it's amazing the eyesight I had. Praise the name of the Lord. Because all that was propelling me in this life, my billfold, the credit cards, the money, whatever I had, identification, it was in there. And there it was. Praise God. And I said, thank you, Lord. How many believe we ought to give God thanks and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. That's why this Sunday afternoon, I'm going to 
going to give God thanks for the Holy Spirit that I feel in this building. And before we leave here and go in that dining room, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to fall upon you. Praise the name of the Lord. And you're going to lift your hands and God is going to come down into you and fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 He wasted his living. And I can waste, and this church can waste. Yes. We just keep having services like we always do. And you can keep your itinerary like you always have. And you can keep your schedule just like you set them. And you can determine that you're not going to use your talent anymore. Or you're not going to use your gift anymore. Though God's given it to you, it belongs to God. He gave it to you. Right. But you're just not going to use it. Come on, brother. You can determine that. Amen. And you'll waste your living Amen. until it's gone. Amen. Until you've spent everything you have. Yes. And it'll be no more. Amen. Everything you have. Yes. My God, what a lesson. Oh, praise God. I've never used this this way. God. This is the first time I ever preached it this way. You know how to preach that. I'm telling you, the Word of God is more powerful yes. than we might have got it locked into. Yes, right. Amen. I'm praying God give me new vision. Yes. Yes. Give, yes. Did you hear what I said? I have my back to you. Yes. I'm praying God give us new vision. Yes. I don't care if I never preach this this way. It belongs here today. Yes. It's a message for this church this Sunday afternoon. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. If I never taught it, if I never preached it, it is God's Word, yes. and it's for us right now. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 